Hello and welcome to this boardroom discussion organized by Maverick Systems and ServiceNow in association with the Economic Times, CTCIO. And uh, uh, my name is Mukbil Amar. I'm the executive editor at the Economic Times, ETCIO, and uh, the moderator for this session. And I'm really, really looking forward to this amazing discussion that we have at hand. And I must also thank you for being here on time, uh, which I always expect something to happen in Chennai. People are very, uh, really punctual and uh, really uh, appreciate the value of time. So gratitude from us on that count. Now, coming to the topic for uh, today's discussion, it is around how do you deliver exceptional experiences for customers and employees with hyper automation? Now, before we go into a systematic round of discussions, I would really want to lay down some kind of a context against which this discussion is going to take place. Now, we have seen that you know, digital transformation has really accelerated, particularly after the pandemic set in. You know, and we are all aware of the unprecedented circumstances which presented themselves over the course of the past two years. And uh, so it has resulted into a situation where digital is no more a choice, which used to be a choice like two, three, four years back. It's become more of a compulsion now. Today, enterprises need that in order to stay competitive, in order to stay relevant, and in order to survive as well. Now, digital transformation is very important because it gives enterprises the facilities of agility, scale, competitiveness, all of which are essential ingredients if you want to stay relevant in today's day and age. Now, this couldn't be truer for the banking sector. Of course, the banking sector has been at the forefront as far as uh, adoption of digital technologies, going digital, all of that is concerned, uh, among all the various sectors. However, we do feel and we have an opinion that this digital transformation, which is already there, I mean, it is one of the front runners, as I uh, alluded to, needs to be accelerated even more. And one of the ways in which it can be accelerated is to leverage emerging technologies, technologies which are really cutting edge. And we see several of them you know, really emerging and uh, becoming state of the art over the past couple of years, in fact, more than a couple of years. Say automation, for instance, RPA, all of these have been there. And uh, their adoption has only increased. Now, the challenge is, and the pertinent point is to keep up that pace of digital transformation which is there and accelerate it even more. Now, what does something like automation do? We are already aware that you know it does away with a lot of human intervention. It introduces a lot of efficiencies in the system. And uh, basically, it streamlines the processes which are there and, of course, the banking sector has been making a lot of use for with all these tools. Now, in today's discussion, we are really going to discuss how this digital transformation can, you know, bring together customer and employee experiences, remove the existence of siloed legacy applications or inefficient back office processes and all of that. And this is particularly relevant today because you know, the realities have really changed over the past two years. That would form the crux of the discussion that we have at hand today. And uh, I do feel that, you know, there couldn't have been a better time to discuss all of this because finally we are getting to see each other after a gap of two years. And uh, I always feel that physical interactions can never be completely replaced by virtual ones. So this gives us ample opportunity to discuss the subject at hand, and uh, also because today we have in our midst uh, a lineup of extremely knowledgeable, very insightful, and informative speakers, all of whom are very senior technology leaders, and uh, therefore we look forward to a great insightful discussion. Uh, at this point, I would want to uh, you know introduce the speakers from uh, ServiceNow and Maverick. It's my pleasure to do that. Uh, Sanjeev Saha, ServiceNow Senior Manager, Supratik Nag, VP Products, Maverick Systems, 
Arvind Srinivasan, ServiceNow Advisory Consultant, BFSI. Now, uh, let's dive straight into the discussion at hand. Uh, so, can I have opening remarks from uh, Sridharan? Let's start with you. You are... Hi. Uh, bang. <laughs> good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'm Sridharan from Sriram Transport Finance. So, um, I, I just heard that uh, we were all uh, uh, tech or tech-enabled, tech-enriched, tech, tech, tech uh, leaders here. Uh, I should be the odd man out. I'm from uh, hardcore financing and from the ground business. But then uh, I'm sure uh, I will be adding some perspective about what the business and the ground realities really look at tech and how uh, the expectations are laid. Uh, because I always look at <clears throat> my customer's business as my business. And once he's enabled, we are much better enabled. So I, I really look forward to also listening to all of you, trying to see how best my customer could be enriched. Uh, <laughs> thanks to all your help. Wonderful. Can we have uh, a quick round of introductions, please, around the table? Hello. Hi. This is Venkatesh here. I'm from Bank Bazaar uh, Technology team. Uh, so uh, we are a marketplace of financial products, Bank Bazaar, and we try to find out what is the right product for a customer based on his civil, civil score and everything else. Uh, also, after the pandemic hit, uh, we thought how can we uh, help the banks to complete the most important KYC process before we implement something called as video KYC, which many of the banks are using today, uh, through which the bank agent can directly contact, the, talk to the customer using a video call. Uh, these are some of the things which we are doing. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, myself, Vijay. I am the CISO and Head of Networking for Magandar Financial Services. And uh, we are into my, um, financial services in the sense like uh, home finance, we are into insurance broking, we are into asset management, that's the mutual fund part of it, that's a very new one which has got in incorporated. And in addition to that, uh, we are also prime of a in the space of SME as well as uh, car loans, that's where it is. Wonderful. Hi, I'm Sriram, I'm head of engineering from M2P. I am to be fintech, so we are an API infrastructure as a service company. Uh, we enable fintechs, big techs, uh, basically banks, and also NBFCs uh, uh, with uh, their uh, product journeys. So uh, new product innovations, and we collaborate with them on and off. So that's about him. How about me? Hi, I'm Mukesh, uh, founder of Monexo. We are a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace. So in our marketplace, uh, all of you can invest one lakh rupees, and we break that into thousand rupee units. And on the other side, we source borrowers, and you earn two x of FD because of investing through us. Prior to this, I was working with Citibank in Hong Kong and Singapore. Wonderful. <coughs> Uh, this is Arvind Srinivasan. I am an uh, advisory solution consultant working with ServiceNow. Um, I've been all along working with BFSI and transforming BFSI industries. Looking forward for our discussion today. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Sundara Vadivelan. I am the Senior Vice President at CAMP's uh, Computer Age Management Services. So I think most of you know like we are in the mutual fund industry. And more than mutual fund, I think we are also now venturing into the other business in terms of uh, account aggregator, we have into the uh, in the NPS, and we are uh, also expanding our uh, other portfolio. So, looking forward for a good discussion. Wonderful. Good evening, everyone. This is Harsh uh, from UB, uh, formerly known as Kadavanu. Some of uh, uh, my customers are here, right? So, we are B two B marketplace, uh, helping uh, enterprises as well as NBFCs to. Um, connect with the banks and uh, other financial institutions to meet their capital requirements. Uh, multiple product lines starting from simple loans to supply chain, co-lending, securitization, um, bonds, all in uh, one platform. And also helping banks after that to sort of um, monitor that portfolio, collect it, so providing the end-to-end -end range of solutions for debt management. Great. Hi. Good evening, all. I'm Durga Prasad. I'm the CIO for Chola Mandalam Investments. Uh, so Chola has been in asset-based finance for over 40 years now. And it's good to see some of our partners here, like we partner heavily with Bank Bazaar, 
you know, M2P as well as Cred Avenue. So uh, we <laughs> are in the midst of those transitions as a MBFC. Right. Hi, I'm Shupratik. Uh, I'm Vice President Products in Maverick. Uh, I'm almost 19 years of experience in data science. I've been leading uh, uh, the pro digital transformation in HS HSBC in my earlier role. Prior to that, I was with Barclays and al also some of the leading consulting firm in, across the globe. Thank you. Looking forward to this discussion. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Sanjeev Saha. I manage the enterprise business for ServiceNow South. Uh, and uh, you know, first of all, thanks a lot for all of you to join uh, this session. And really looking forward to have a you know very fruitful discussion in the next uh, forty-five minutes. Thank you. Wonderful. So, uh, oh, sorry. Please. Yeah, first of all, apologies. No problem. Extremely sorry. Yeah. So myself, Balaji, I do represent Orange Retail Finance. We are a non-banking finance company. We do the retail financing. So I had the complete digital transformation journey for them. So we'd have our own consumer app where customer can come download the app and apply for the loan. So we do a two-wheeler loan, uh, used and uh, new two-wheelers. We do a loan against property and a cash. So these are products we do offer it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for turning up today. I know the traffic can be the real difficult part in the city. And so let's start with, uh, I would like to start with Venkatesh on your views about the evolving technology landscape, and then I'll come to you for the business perspective on it. per day today. Uh, so that really helped and uh, the banks are also liking the process because uh, we are able to get uh, everything done just digitally. And um, right now we also facilitate the document collection and uh, of course a, do a founder feels that everything should be from DigiLocker or anything like or from digital. Uh, anything else you want me to add? No, no. Uh, I basically wanted your perspective on digital transformation, you know, across the BFSI sector. Got it. Okay. Uh, some of the other initiatives which I really love is like the SERSAI CKYC registry wherein every bank starts pushing the documents to the SERSAI and we are able to get like uh, about customer and uh, try to pull all the information about the customer from the SERSAI. Similarly, like uh, UDIs, uh, EKYC and everything. But the, what, is, what we observed from uh, or connecting all these journeys, customers don't know that they have to go to the UDI website and type the OTP, wait for the OTP and try to complete the process properly. So there's a lot of friction, right? And then we started integrating with CKYC, uh, which is size registry. It's again amazing, but the quality of documents again is somewhat not up on par with what the banking norms are. So. These are small things which I think uh, we can definitely uh, try to bring uh, some uh, better process because right now again RBA regulation says that Aadhaar, PAN card and the actual face should all match together. But if you see PAN card, most of the PANs are all faded out. right? Uh, so we really, f I really feel personally that if the regulations are something like I can show the e-PAN and we also make it simpler for the customers to download the ePAN or the UDA or the Aadhaar card, e, uh, EKYC, everything, we make it simple. It will be excellent. Because at the end of the day, the customer base which Bank Bazaar is targeting or most of the customers which I think many of the industries are targeting are not tech savvy. Right? We have to make the solutions which is very, very simple for them. Wonderful views. Uh, and I totally echo your thoughts that uh, technology should really be democratized so that you know, it becomes a very handy tool to the voiceless, to the marginalized, to the unorganized sector, a sentiment I fully appreciate. And I, we also appreciate the digital initiatives that you have been taking, uh, which is 
which actually shows modern technology in action. So, Sridharan, I want to come to you for uh, your view on, you know, looking at digital transformation in the BFSI sector from the business perspective. What are your views on it? Thanks. Uh, see, friends, um, very, very openly and frank, a uh, lot of thoughts and a lot of technology until now has been focused on how we do our work um, better and more efficient and more effective uh, equipped with uh, digital transformation. But I think today has, the scenario is very, very, very fast changing and it's really uh, getting into a boom uh, situation. Because now, now the whole transformation is whatever we were doing, forget that. Now it's all getting into what your customer was doing. I mean, that's going to open up the whole uh, marketplace for us. Because if we start understanding what our customer was doing, and you enable him digitally to do his business better and better, more efficient and efficient, and then you have a play because you will live with him and you will continue your journey with him. So tech enabling companies, now rather tech enabling the company's customers, because they're all businessmen. True, and they're true. all enabled in some work that they're doing. Now if that transformation to happen, I think this is the best time because one, the talent is uh, coming in, the technology is being available for that sort of a situation to come. I mean, uh, my friend would uh, definitely share this thought a trucker on the road on a highway uh, somewhere in a remote location. Imagine he being connected with his family, with his financier, with his business associates, who is going to give him a load, who is going to uh, repair his vehicle, everything. Nay, this is the best possible time and probably technology is bringing out a situation for us where it is possible to dream that and actually bring that uh, to the ground to take the whole thing forward. So I think in terms of uh, the tech space, uh, the next generation is starting where it is the catered are going to now cater to their customers and the opportunity is going to be exponential. <laughs> and, and therefore, I think everybody's business is going to grow because if my customer's business is going to grow, then we all have to ride on that. And I'm, I'm sure the tech guys are going to make much more money now. <laughs> <laughs> They are already doing that. <laughs> I, I would also agree to this point of view that there wasn't a better time to be actually in the business of technology. And, uh, uh, you know, as uh, one technology leader put it some time back, thanks to the pandemic, that reality has uh, set in more realistically today. Uh, and uh, I also agree that, uh, you know, it's going forward, the world is going to be much more connected and technology has to act as an enabler of the businesses of your customers. I totally echo your point. Uh, Vijay, your views on this? See, I just go back, I'm back in terms of history. When you happen to think about the airline industry, you remember when Captain Gopinath started his uh, airline, the Air Deccan, okay? This motto was like, simply fly. So simplify is the fact that should have really happened in the financial industry way back then. I think we would have achieved all these things maybe about 10 years back or whatsoever the case may be. Now coming to the adoption per se, one has to have as an end user, he should have everything on the fly. Okay? And it should be simple. The most important thing is simple. Uh, rather than see, he was mentioning about the fact that uh, the documents are faded and probably they are not well matching with things. That's very true. Just see, in my name, my name is really odd. Vijay Radhakrishna, actually it's Vijay Kumar Radhakrishna. Okay. Some people call me Radhakrishna Vijay Kumar, some it's R Vijay. In fact, in my company they call me Vijay. Why basically to eliminate all these things because the C was said, come on, by the time somebody keys in your, uh, I mean, any <laughs> mail to you, it may probably end up with some other guy. So you are R Vijay, that's it, like, that's the way the email is, and that's how it stays till date. Now, coming to the fact, uh, the simplification is very important, even now, many things, including my personal data, in some certain cases, it's referred as Radhakrishnan Vijay Kumar, and some certain things, Vijay Kumar Radhakrishnan. Difficulty in matching is really a major problem. All these things need to be simplified. So ultimately, for an end user, see, we, I'm, I'm technically, under, you know, I'm really savvy, okay, well-educated, but the problem is even I'm facing all these problems, 
okay way back if you happen to see my income tax uh, the pan card I used to call my name as Radha Krish Vishay Kumar because I used to be a scientist with the government of India based out of Chand Chandigarh. They didn't realize that Vijay Kumar is odd thing. Vijay Kumar was the name that was in my card mm -hmm. until probably I uh, managed to get that particular thing changed changed through Karvi. Okay, Karvi was doing that particular activity for changing all that stuff. Uh, years after I changed it. Okay, now the point is simplification has to be in such. It should understand we are referring to the same guy. It should technically match the photograph and say that this is the same guy we are referring to, whether it's Vijay Kumar Radhakrishnan or Radhakrishnan Vijay Kumar. That's the way of simplification we need to bring in as far as the technology is concerned. Because uh, the guy who is there in the village or whatsoever the case may be, may not even understand all these things, the nitty gritties and all that. He should simply provide his photograph, they recognize it, unless there is a twin which is really matching kind. <laughs> that's a different thing altogether. Let us not get into that particular thing. But that's how exactly the simplicity has to bring in. But yeah, we are moving towards that. A lot of technologies, the mostly the AP integrations and all that stuff. That's very, very important. Because earlier, you had to start from scratch to get the things changed. Whereas now, it's just a question of adopting the right technology. We have, I think, a lot of startups around like. And adopt that particular thing and go about digging, I mean, getting into something without digging into the roots and make modifications out there. That's the way the uh, way should be. And I think we are going the right direction there. Wonderful. So Vijay says simplification is the way forward. And uh, of course, if technology has to reach the grassroots level for the people who are really, you know, belong to the unorganized sector or to the really poor people who uh, you know, who don't have the tools of education and literacy. Uh, if it has to percolate to that level, it will have to be really very, very simple. And thanks for adding that personal anecdote, which is uh, which would help us in the way forward on how to simplify things. Now, Sriram, I would, uh, you know, want to have your perspective on how the digital route can really help enterprises in terms of removing inefficiencies from the system, streamlining processes, create operational excellence, of course, because of the company that you come from, and you must be facing a lot of these things. Yep, so with respect to, um, I would say like automation, right? So RPA, everybody would have seen RPA, right? So that is a bread and butter right now for any operations or like back office activities. So the adoption of RPA is something which is moving faster. And uh, I think like <coughs> traditional banks to NBFCs, they are seeing that as a way to uh, reduce the human errors which is being added. Like in control systems, you basically see that there is human errors which creeps up, right, in any activity, right? And uh, um, that RPA is basically helping them to ward off and uh, uh, basically not put people for problems, but uh, basically use people's brains for problems. So that is what is uh, what I started seeing with respect to last seven years when the transformation started happening. And I also see that there are people who wanted to DIY, it's like do it yourself kind of stuff. Like so, um, when you see M2P, like we call ourselves as APA infrastructure as a service company. Like you wanted to just play with what we have and uh, see what mix and matches you can do, and then come up with uh, new products, right? Which you wanted to basically go and try it out in the market, right? So. There are two parts here. One is try out stuff. Another one is try out with the customers, right? So, uh, with more cloud adoption and red reduction in capex, right? By, with cloud adoption, right? It's more on more on opex. People are willing to come to that level and do it at a. I mean, like try to. Uh, I mean, like test their. Uh, uh, I mean, like hypothesis and then go to market faster and fail fast, right? Fail fast is something like they, they people used to under underline fail as failures, but fail fast is a theme right now, right? You fail fast, iterate fast, and then come back with uh, things like that. And I also see that there are adoptions on the infrastructure side, on infrastructure as a code, and also basically trying to, like previously people used to have downtimes for their systems, right? So uh, right now, if, if you see, right, people are saying that, yes, with redundancy, we can reduce that. So these are things which I see with customers who are basically moving towards, uh, I mean, like with adoption of newer technologies like cloud and things like that, they are able to see that automations is a way to solve problems 
uh, and uh, they use people to basically uh, think those pro I mean, like think those solutions and adopt automation as a way to solve their problems. So, right. Thanks for that bird's eye view. Now, you know, I would really want to make the discussion more granular. So, how are you experimenting with something, say, automation, RPA? Yep. Are you first of all the question is are you experimenting, and then we get to the next part. Yeah. is how you are experimenting. Yeah, internally what we are doing is like we are in the third level of our re-architecture. So we used to have like 2014, we started with our initial seed architecture and then 2016 we did our re-architecture. Now we are basically moving towards completely a DevOps mode right now from M2P side in which like we wanted uh, uh, to adopt uh, completely on cloud side. We cannot replace certain things uh, which are hardware specific like switches right now which we are working with our partners like Visa, MasterCard, and Rupee, but uh, all other stuff we are moving completely towards cloud. And when we are moving towards cloud, the real part is how we are ma making our software available at uh, the SLA which we are providing to the customers, right? So that is wha where we are trying to introduce more redundancies and basically doing a well-architected framework like some cl cloud, we basically follow something like well-architected frameworks so that even though your commodity so hardware is like giving you an SLA of 95 percentage, right? You can introduce more redundancy to basically give active, active uh, availability to your customers and basically you ward off the, uh, I mean like the, I mean like ward off the uh, availability with, uh, with the hardware, with uh, the redundancies which you provide. So that is the first part which we are trying out. And the next part is obviously the infrastructure as a code part. The infrastructure as a code is what we are, uh, completely, uh, I mean, like we wanted to do it so that we can scale our, uh, uh, our infrastructure, right? And then we can basically reduce our downtimes to near zero. Right now, if you see uh, activities which we do is like nearly 0% uh, uh, downtime is what we are achieving towards, we are moving towards in many of our products, right? So uh, the, this basically helps us with uh, that part. And with respect to operations, for example, reconciliation, and also with respect to, uh, I mean like re reconciliation is a major portion in which like you do daily reconciliation for all your uh, incoming activities where we have extensively used our RPA programs, right? So we have invested in RPAs so that that basically removes us human errors and uh, because you, you need to scale as well, not only the human errors, but also you need to scale. So RPA is helping us there for past few years, like three years we have invested in RPA and that is helping us wonder. and. We, we don't need to put more people for that, uh, uh, for recon and things like that with respect to operations, but uh, we basically go for uh, uh, this RPA automation. So the, these are the three things which comes to my mind from M2P when we think about uh, automation. The modern technology landscape, I have this perspective that it has, the current fabric is such that it has made the leveraging of all these emerging technologies a possibility. For example, you refer to the cloud and how, you know, RPA, hyper automation, automation can all be woven into it because of the existing tech uh, fabric that exists and which brings us to, uh, you know, to another hypothesis which is very well supported by the present uh, developments, which is that, uh, you know, this modern technology fabric has really leveled the playing field in favor of you know new age companies for example the one that we are going to next uh, mr mukesh it's a new age company it's a startup which has been enabled by this technology fabric where the legacy or traditional enterprises don't really hold that edge which used to exist earlier it has really democratized the field of technology and which has resulted in a situation where we see so many startups, so many unicorns, so many new age companies doing wonderfully well. So uh, Mukesh, I really want to go to you for your perspective on this and also on the challenges that enterprises really face in this, uh, in this uh, domain, particularly vis-a-vis -vis something like digital transformation. Sure, uh, just a preamble and imagine this was not 2022 and uh, COVID had not come in 2019, but 2009 <laughs> or even in 1999. <laughs> without, I think, Netflix or Sony Live or without the 4G, 5G network, I think there would have been a lot of uh, divorces by that time. Right? <laughs> uh, 
I'm not a technologist, so I'll answer this question more from a business aspect mm. or a consumer aspect. Surely the cloud infrastructure which came through and right people, uh, banks are still facing the challenges in terms of security to say yes for it, but it's a great enabler for a new age company. Uh, mm. Being a banker myself, I remember when I joined banks early, we had a, a in Shakti Towers where city was born, we had a whole floor of uh, uh, data center and with huge amount of air conditioning. Then I went to Singapore and we had not one, but we had a whole building. <laughs> and to enter that, it required like a NASA level of security. And yeah. if you entered there, you had to wear at least three pullovers because it was so cold. Oh my God. Right? So cloud is a great infrastructure uh, uh, enabler. I think government, mm -hmm. the specifically when I look at Indian regulator, Indian government, what they have done by enabling and opening up our data and data privacy is another issue which we have to grapple with. But as of now, if the data is not democratized, whatever we're talking about, doing EKYC, digital logger, wouldn't have been possible to digitize our Indian processes, right? I remember in 1990s, when a car loan or a personal loan or a housing loan, the files used to be this thick, and yeah. it all used to be Xerox papers, and somebody had to sign, seen an original verify. Now, those, are, they, those days have gone now, right? And, and that's a good progress India has made. And I can also say very strongly that our UPI framework and our NPCI framework is far ahead, our Aadhaar framework is far ahead on identity, etc., cetera, uh, compared to a lot of modern countries, right? And again, this brings to the point that it's not legacy. UPI had no legacy, right? So it, it opens up. Uh, going to grassroots people, I, I wish there were more and more apps in local language and voice. I remember seeing it on the streets of India. Uh, there are a lot of people who make a fool out of these common men. See, I've done the UPI transfer, they have not done, they show old screenshot. But Paytm put a box out there which voiced out hmm. when the SMS came out in their local language. I think that's the level of innovation we need. Local language, phone and voice. This is the three triangle. Whoever can win that, I think will be able to serve millions and millions of consumers which are underserved. Along with that, government has started, or not government, but another, another organization within that, is OKIN, Open Credit Enable Net, Enablement Network, where you are able to do a 100 rupee loan, nano loans of 100 rupees, and we know that whether you underwrite a 100 rupee loan or you underwrite a 500 rupee loan or a 10,000 rupee loan, the cost is give or take same. But with that open credit enablement network, you could be underwriting a 100 rupee loan at a much cheaper cost. And that will be having a real transformational effect on the ground. If you go to any village or even on the uh, uh, our Coimbedu market, a person borrowing 1,000 rupee could pay as high as 200 rupee interest for the day. Now he will be enabled through OKEN very, very soon. And it's already, test is going on. And I think that will be revolutionary for India. True. I agree with you that, uh, you know, the impact of technology, particularly, you know, if it is, uh, you know, of the innovative variety, it can be transformational. It has the potential to really transform the lives of a lot of people who have been underprivileged, you know, or underrepresented, all of that. I totally agree with this uh, sentiment. Uh, Balaji, would you like to add on to uh, the challenges that uh, exist for uh, enterprises in this sphere as far as digital transformation is concerned? Uh, since I do belong to a retail financing, I'll tell my journey with Orange. Uh, so we are a completely a traditional company. We started with a fully a traditional business model. Uh, if you see this NBFC or bank, it's almost a 300-year-old business. So what they do, they borrow money from somebody 
and sell money to somebody. That's what the traditional business model, everybody has it. Someone need to get it or someone. So in this, where we can able to build it. So the only the technology is a key enabler in this entire business journey. That's what we understood in this entire process. So what it did is those days when you start dispersing a loan, it took almost a week's time and all. Uh, since my borrowing capability is also very high, since I'm not a bigger player, uh, so my borrowing will be also very high and my selling also will be very high. So where we can able to leverage it? So we discussed and we figured it out, can we able to reduce the turnaround time? Okay, because the area which you operate is completely a kind of a tire three, tire four segment. And almost 70% of customers are all first time borrowers. That means they'll not have any credit history, nothing would be there. So based on that, we are going to process it. So we started building our own engine. Uh, we started discussing with multiple fintech companies. We started building our own lending platform, integrating with various fintech players. So we started, once I just get the other photo, just if I take a photo of other, can I able to give a loan? So our entire, entire loan journey is only with taking an other photo. I can dispose a loan within less than 15 minutes max. So that was the entire journey we built in. So what it has helped us is, we started getting entry into multiple dealers. So initially I was only with very few dealers, then I started entering into multiple dealers. I do have now 4,000 dealer network. Now our range of product is complete. We can even give our app to the dealer where he can able to onboard even we sitting there. So we started building app to dealer also. So we started from a double bedroom apartment. So those days we never had infrastructure or anything, even I never had a server. So what this has given us is, is given us the strength to reduce one thing. Like since you don't have infrastructure here, straight away go to the cloud. So my first choice is to go to the cloud. So we started with one server and added up multiple other servers. We started looking at, uh, right now since we migrated to a bigger place, even if I need a server right now, straight away tick mark is only with the cloud. <laughs> because I have not even built the capability or capacity to put it on us. So my point is whichever new things which is emerging, if you don't even have the decision point, straight away go to that now. So I think the decision making becomes much simpler. That is one learning we did it at. And since we do with multiple fintech players, so we always keep discussing with multiple players what they are into industry, how they are into industries, how best I can able to give to the customers. So this is the other learning which we did it. If you ask me the challenging point, let's ask you rightly told, like if something is in a regional language, how we can able to empower it. So that also we are working with multiple other players where if customer just discussing with the kind of his local language can able to give a loan and all. So this POS is going on. I think this will really enable us in terms of touch, touch base with the rural customers. Right. I do agree that this will bring down a lot of barriers which exist. Uh, Mr. Uh, Subramani, uh, so we have been talking about various tools like automation. Have you been experimenting with automation and how for, how uh, good or a b bad an experience has it been experimenting with it? Have you seen any reduction in costs, efficiencies, all of that? So, good evening once again. So, see, I have uh, actually seen and uh, was heading the automation practice in one of the service industry. So, the way I look at this, uh, first of all, organization need to be clear in terms of what do they need to automate, mm -hmm. right? While predominantly I had worked on the IT infrastructure side of uh, automation and on the end user side of it. End user side, again, it is the, what kind of a user experience you will be able to change and create. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a variety of tools. It could be a chatbot, it could be a, uh, the, the self-help portal, a self-healing solutions and variety of solutions which are there available in the market and how well you are able to integrate. But in my view what I was actually seeing as a challenge is, is the quality of data. Mm -hmm. For you to do any kind of an automation and you wanted to introduce any AI capability, the quality of data what is there available as part of your tickets or within the organization is not good enough for you to directly start anything. So it is more about the dirty data need to be cleansed and from there you have to build the quality of data for you to get started with what you wanted to achieve. Right. So while the framework actually started with a Leah, Hia, Zia, uh, what I actually call as low-end automation, high-end automation, and extreme-end automation. Mm -hmm. Low-end automation, all that created with individual scripts. So whatever you wanted to do, you will be able to create a script, run that script, and the, the challenge there was like you were not able to measure what is that you were able to automate. End of the day, if any, anything as an organization you wanted to measure your automation percentage, 
there is no way you will be able to come up with a measurement mm -hmm. so today you need to have a measurement for you to know that how much effort you are able to reduce how much of efficiency you are able to improve and what those things contributed to the end user experience so that actually transformed to a orchestration based automation solutions while orchestration based automation solutions still add a challenge in terms of the rules are defined the reusability was a problem you were not able to replicate it across so every time it is more of a customization which has to go which again put a lot of bottleneck while there are multiple industry player who was having the orchestrator but still as an organization we were not able to move forward and achieve what we wanted as part of your automation journey so that's the point where the extreme end automation with an ai capability with your ai and machine learning really helped many organization to uh, achieve a stage in terms of probably going back and sharing to the market that yes we were able to automate and our automation percentage uh, was so much and we were able to reduce so much of effort and with that so much of headcount we were able to reduce so i, I think it is the organization need to be very very clear in terms of identifying what is that i need to automate it, it is not that one percentage of an issue which is happening which i have to pick up and then try to spend six months of time to go and automate right it is my 80 percentage of work whatever is actually which is uh, involving more of effort that is the one which i have to actually pick for my automation it is more of identifying what needs to be automated and also ensuring like what is the benefit you are actually going to get and it should be in a phased manner and that should be the adaption what any organization has to follow and with that journey i think we were able to make multiple organization with the automation journey we were able to bring in more about an orchestration based making it a high end automation and then from there gradually enabling them to move to the ai based automation because the data as i said in the beginning is very very critical for you to really make uh, enable anybody to get into an extreme end automation true yeah. and uh, mr subramani has raised uh, very pertinent points uh, first of which was about the quality of data i think a lot of these uh, emerging technologies ai ml automation hyper automation all the ability of enterprises to leverage them will depend on a great degree on the quality of data that they possess uh, and going forward i think this is what is going to decide how successful they are in leveraging these technologies and i also agree with your second point which is largely true for any aspect of science and technology that some amount of identification and measurement are absolutely critical uh, as far as any digital endeavor is concerned because that is what will bring in a kind of discipline you know in the pursuit of these uh, digital routes very interesting points uh, mr harsh harshvardhan your views on this please i think uh, see very interesting uh, points so far by all the panelists um, i wanted to add another dimension to it saying like you no know, so so far we are talking about how do we bring efficiency into the existing stuff but uh, technology is actually enabling a lot of new use cases which were not possible before right so i'll give you now example like you know um, in country now we have this whole wave of my now later right uh, think about the end to end scenario a customer coming on a fintech website and or maybe a retail website where he is putting a fintech card and then um, he is clicking a button the request is going to from um, um, e-commerce to fintech then fintech to a platform like cadavenu right from there getting uh, routed to multiple banks coming back with the approval decision within 2 to 3 seconds mm -hmm. right think about how would you be able to do it something like that without technology right so that's what when the uh, ecosystem works together and you know we can use technology as a glue to bring the ecosystem together that is the kind of power we can unleash now the challenge in this 
is of, co of course, like, you know, data is a big challenge, not having protocols around interoperability, standardization, that's also a big challenge. Legacy systems, huge challenge. Not happening open APIs, huge challenge. Not having, you know, access to the developer, developers, probably one of the biggest challenge, <laughs> right? So, you have so, listed a whole <laughs> plethora of challenges. <laughs> right, but uh, see people, despite of these things, you know, tremendous amount of progress is happening. Mm. And I think we are moving very fast and a lot of interesting work is happening, whether it's UPI, digital payments, you know, we're we are saying like, you know, we are one of the best in the world or, you know, even um, a lot of new use cases, uh, underwriting for, you know, new age uh, people, uh, new to credit, you know, so many, so many different things are happening. So I think, yeah, it will always be the case, right? So there'll be challenges and there'll be new technologies and there'll be new use cases, right? So. Sir. Excellent. Thanks for bringing up so many challenges <laughs> in one breath, breathless. Uh, yes, yes, that was a very valid. Yes, yes, absolutely. And true, true, true. And I think for something as broad as digital transformation, the existence of a robust ecosystem is an imperative. I mean, it has to be there. It is a given. Uh, very pertinent points coming from uh, from you, Harshwadhan, and I hope both of you are you know taking down those points. Very interesting points. Absolutely, uh, Mukbal. I just want to add at least provide one solution to a challenge, right? If I may. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. please go. Um, Mr. Harsh, I think you easily laid out all the challenges, right? Um, at one challenge, uh, at least we are seeing the technology is kind of solving, or in the verge of solving, is a, the lack of developers, right? Now, um, you know, I, w I, was a, I started my journey as a Perl scripter, right? Java coding, right? Uh, C, what not, what not, what not. Now, what is happening is, um, you know, uh, why should we make developers, you know, uh, face some of this complex logic, complex languages, right? Why can't we move up? Why can't we make business users itself, right? configure logic, build those applications, right? How can we bring this in a low code manner, right? So we are seeing that change happening in my conversations is, A, if as a professional developer, instead of him spending a lot of time in developing an application, uh, you know, using language, can we make it in a configurable low code manner? B, provide some of the capability to the business user where business users can configure this logic in their own manner and only the complex work is done by the professional developer, right? So we are seeing technology changing and at least some part of that challenge is will eventually get addressed. Right. If I allow yes. me to add a few words. Yeah, yeah. So certainly from a low-code perspective, so we also use a low-code platform for certain use cases. But certainly there will be need of, that. for example, we are integrating with him, we are integrating with him. So all this, whenever the integration comes, you know, certainly the low-code platform will have huge challenges in integrating with any other. Because at any given point of for me, 40 different APIs need to run. So without a kind of a developers, no. So certainly low-code can able to answer certain areas. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to core application where we are integrating with multiple people, certainly we need it, uh, developers there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Good counterpoint coming from Mr. Balaji. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Durga Prasad, did you know, you have uh, we just had a perspective from Balaji on, you know, experimenting with uh, new age emerging tools like low code, no code. And of course, Arvind also gave his perspective on that. What is your view on it? Have you experimented with it or would you want to do that? And how, what is the efficacy that you see going forward with something like this? Yeah, so we, we have been experimenting with low code technologies. And I do agree with some of the points that were mentioned there that one of the advantages of low code is the fact that some of the patterns and best practices are already built in there. So which means, you know, your ability to create stuff and deliver products out of the door is so much faster. So you don't have to start with how do I do an authentication layer for some of the security capabilities are all built in. So you can be rest assured that some of those you don't have to start from scratch. 
So the time to delivery for a solution is one big positive from a local perspective. The second, like he rightly mentioned, is you know you could have a wider developer base to tap onto because you could have more citizen developers kind of approach there and where domain expertise becomes more important rather than somebody who say was a full stack engineer who goes right through. So that's the second part there. And the downside which I've seen, it, and like what uh, Raji mentioned was, there are boundaries to low code platform. You know? So while we experiment, we realized, like he was mentioning the need for vernacular. So some of those low codes are probably very, you know, centric to US or those Western markets and you know the ability to adapt to our local needs, say vernacular kind of setup, becomes a constraint. Similar challenges on you know some of the areas of asymmetric encryption and also you end up building those pieces outside which a typical domain developer will not be able to do. Then you will need somebody who's a bit more tech savvy. Okay. So those will be the constraints there. But I think the biggest advantage of low code is where uh, you know, typically you do a custom development. The time to develop is X. With low code, that's cut down significantly. And with X, you typically see what is called a requirement drift. That somebody starts with a certain requirement, by the time you go to the end state, the requirements have changed. But if you cut down that time, the requirement drift is, you know, contained. So your ability to meet and get things out and satisfy your users is low. Excellent perspectives coming from Mr. Durga Prasad. Now I, I would really want to go to Sanjeev on his perspective. Well, you, you know, you have heard the technology leaders here uh, give their perspective on the tech landscape and the technology fabric that exists and their own, you know, experimentations with modern tools like automation, low code, no code. What is your perspective on it, you know, on the larger digital transformation picture as well as what has already been spoken about? Yeah, thanks, Mubil. I think uh, fantastic conversations and, uh, you know, very, very nice points. I, I really want to talk about uh, the entire BFSI segment and, you know, this and the, if you look at the financial services segment, it's one thing is very common is disruption. You know, disruption will happen. Uh, and every time there is a disruption, uh, each of the organization which is related to BFSI segment has actually stood up and adapted to the disruption and, and made changes. And I'll, I'll probably take, uh, you know, uh, an example of um, all of, in, or take you back to around uh, 2000, uh, when um, at that point in time, uh, all of us would have gone to a bank branch uh, for, you know, transferring money. Uh, I still remember I was in my college days and, you know, if I have to transfer money, I have to just go back to the bank branch, stand in, in a queue, and then, you know, do the entire transfer. And then obviously, the, you, all of you would also echo with me a passbook updation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We used, used to go to, to the bank that. branch and have a passbook updation. <laughs> but look at what changed in 2004 when RTGS got implemented. Okay. You know, you know, today if you look at it, I don't think so, I don't remember the last time that I have gone to a bank branch. Everything is online. Okay. That's how disruption is happening in the banking industry and technology is, is one of the key things. What, why we were not able to do in 2000 because of the connectivity issue. We didn't have 5G, no internet. And look at the way it has changed right now. So, uh, you know, and then two years back, what happened? Pandemic hit all of us. None of us has seen what pandemic was in, the, in our entire, you know, lifespan. Uh, every business had to, has to change, uh, you know, had to pivot himself in terms of the way, uh, you know, customers were interacting. Customers became more demanding. And I want to, you know, go back to his point, which Jaraman, uh, you know, did mention, mention about uh, customer business as my business. Right, so you know, as in banking and financial services, you know, you we have to make sure that you hear your customers. When pandemic hit, all of us look at the way we change the pattern of how you know we used to you know shop. You know, if you have to buy a grocery, you know, we are buying through online. If you have to buy medicine, we are doing it online through an app. So that's how the overall industry changed, and you know, the the financial segment really, really took a you know entire leap. Uh, of making sure that they are complying to the customer expectation. Customer expectation really, really changed. And then uh, to talk about, uh, you know, uh, UPI came into picture. Uh, and, you know, Mukesh did uh, mention about it in terms of the UPI thing, which opened up the entire plethora of things, right? You know, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, in, in, as per the study done in April, there are 40 billion transactions which happened in India, only in UPI. Look at the way it has changed the game. 
I think for me, to sum it up, uh, digital transformation is, uh, is the start and the end of how we look uh, at how we serve our customers in a better way. So it starts with customer, our, our centricity towards customers has become much, much important because we want to retain our customers a lot because that's how we will be relevant in the business. Um, and yeah, you know, so from, from my side, I think uh, yes, customer I is the, is yes, the key yes, yes, yes. for us. Customer is the key and uh, customer centricity has uh, come to acquire that much more focus as we have, uh, you know, really sought to democratize technology, really bring it to the grassroots. Uh, it has really worked in favor of the customer, uh, first of all, and thanks for giving that, uh, you know, the broader picture, painting the broader picture of digital transformation in the BFSI sector. And of course, this is, uh, I mean, going by the examples and the anecdotes that uh, Sanjeev spoke about, I do agree, you know, the age group that we all belong to, you know, the kind of things, we are the ones, actually, we are the generation that has seen that tremendous disruption happening, tremendous transformation happening. I mean, today you do a UPI. I was in, uh, I've been uh, frequenting Delhi quite a lot. And, uh, and in Delhi, I found that I was, you know, people were asking for like five rupees, two rupees through UPI. And I was so, so <laughs> surprised by this. I mean, you know, it tells a lot about the phenomenal change that has come in the BFSI sector over the past several years. And of course, certain things have been instrumental in taking the digital agenda forward. Uh, thanks for giving... I would like to add one more point. Sorry for that. But, you know, the point that you mentioned about our, uh, you know, age group and look at the way our children are growing up right now. <laughs> they haven't seen the transformation at all from, you know, going to a bank branch to completely automated. They are all, you know, accustomed towards everything online. So their expectation in next it's five years is going to be much more. Yeah. So the, every industry has to really, really transform themselves to make sure they are up to that yes. expectation of uh, the you know, new customer age, what we say. True, true. Yeah. true. Yeah. I, I, we have the uh, benefit. No, I, I was going to say that exactly the same point. Uh, Gen Zs, as they are called, they don't know what is rotatory phone, what is a landline phone. They are born with a mobile and that to a smartphone. Right? True, true. Uh, they see more content on Netflix or whatever OTT platforms than offline. Uh, they do more education from, not from classroom, but YouTube, right? right? And uh, their expectations are everything is instant at my time, not your time. Absolutely. So, this has been the key change which has right? happened, uh, is that the customer expectation has been the most ephemeral of things, so fleeting, right. it's impossible to catch up at times. I totally agree with you. However, I also would uh, like to make this point that the advantage that we have is that we have that perspective of seeing that sea change through our ears. The others, you know, the, the next generation would probably not know what a phone was like and how it really transformed through various stages with big phones and the slimming down of it. And, you know, we know the entire, uh, you know, the entire change that has happened. We are very familiar with that. Uh, thanks for uh, painting that, uh, you know, that big picture for us, Sanjeev. Now, uh, making the discussion again, you know, a notch up and taking it a gear up. Uh, Supratik, you have also heard about, you know, the experimentations, various experimentations with, uh, uh, tools like automation, low code, no code. Now, uh, you know, what is your perspective of, uh, you know, really helping out customers or, you know, enterprising, uh, enterprises taking the digital route and actually trying to leverage these tools that exist today? Okay. <coughs> uh, so thanks of all as for us, such a nice uh, discussion. You can use this. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, thanks for such a nice discussion. So, if you see a uh, bank uh, compared to other industries, basically kind of a, a lately they uh, accustomed to the technology. So, a lot of other industries have done it much more ahead, much more earlier than that. Uh, but thanks to the fintech and the new age banks, because nowadays banking services are not being done by the banks, can be done by the e-commerce company. So, they are changing the entire ecosystem and they are once they are coming to picture the 
the entire ecosystem getting uh, getting much more spread across. So, which is required from the this current scenario is the processes and, and the system must be more resilient and future ready. So, while doing that some of the new age technology which is always coming into picture is, uh, is like AI, ML and the RPA or robotic process automation. So, on and all these angles are actually creating the lot of adding lot of values to the entire system. So, now we can see the your loan process is getting automated, your uh, nowadays in future I think some one of you have I think uh, Sriram you mentioned about so, some thick book of uh, loan documents or files we need to have. Nowadays, it is basically you need to give some of the papers or not even needs to do that, just give your Aadhaar number and, and or some of the, just some numbers will be some numbers or some few documents can give you the entire thing, because you can fetch all the, your trade information from the credit bureau, etcetera. So, that entirely has, has a given a shift from the older way of banking to the newer way of banking. So, and uh, now one of the another things which a lot of you have also mentioned about uh, the documents. Uh, so, another key angle to it is basically uh, we used to have the something called OCR technology. Now, it is getting moved to a uh, something called your uh, document intelligence system. Even uh, you are you, you can use it using AWS and all there are a lot of tools that are available which can can be trained to any type of document whether it is a uh, your native language document English or any other country like document and that can be readable to the to a machine. So, those are the quick, uh, quick things and a very small way of uh, using the automation and adding to the value to the entire system. So, that I think this is uh, the way that it is getting changed from the older way of banking to the very newer way, where uh, you do not need to do anything and the process is getting much more faster. Documents can be readable, you do not need to do a scan, it only send us email or send a, a PDF of the document and the machine can read all the information and the fit it back to the to the to your system. So, that has make a quite a number of shift from the older way to the new age technologies that would probably I'd like to add. Right. Uh, I love this term future ready. I mean how do you ensure that because solving the current contemporary problems is not sufficient. You have to have a vision of the future and move towards it. Because for enterprises wanting to lead, just catching up with the present is not enough. One needs to go in a direction which would make them future ready and not only solve problems that they are currently confronted with. This is a very, uh, I completely agree with this perspective and this is the direction in which enterprises need to look at now because catching up will not really help them serve that purpose and they will always find themselves falling short of maybe, you know, customer experience or satisfying their expectations, you know, which are always on the fly. A very interesting points coming from you. So, uh, Arvind, uh, very quickly from you. You know, so we have seen this, uh, you know, a diverse range of uh, perspectives where we spoke about the entire gamut of aspects uh, connected with digital transformation. How do you see what are the key elements that must go into a digital strategy that enterprises need not only to be uh, sufficient for the present, but as well as going forward for the future? Sure, Mukbal. I think great pointers, right? Great thoughts. As per me, right, if I look at it, the digital strategy should be across three pillars. Number one, customer experience, right? How should I deliver a superior customer experience? Across multiple angles. I am a customer. I should be seamlessly experiencing in the same way across omnichannel. I go to a chatbot, I go to a mobile app, I go to a website, I go to the branch, I call a call center, it should be the same seamless experience. It should not be a different experience. One example. Number second example, as a customer, I should be able to start my journey from one channel, continue from where I left off on another channel, and finish it in another channel. Right? As an example, I start a journey, I am I'm looking for a loan application, sir. Right? I am going to a chatbot. I am stopping the journey. I go to my mobile application, 
I should be continue, able to continue where I left off. It should not, again, ask me for the documentation. When you go to the branch, they should not ask for all the information again. They should start from where I left off, right? Third example, service availability. At no point, as a customer, I should have an outage. I'll give you my personal example. I was talking to a CEO of a leading bank in India. I met him, and we were talking about predictive AI operations. He was telling Arvind, touch wood, for the last two years, we didn't have any outage. But it's a great thought. The same national bank, my father has been with 35 plus years. So I visit with my father, 10 o'clock in the morning. I was surprised. The core banking system was down. I couldn't transact. The bank manager, I asked the bank manager to call me when it was up. He called me at 5 p.m. The entire business day is gone. See the impact, the revenue impact. I immediately texted the CEO, sir, I'm in this branch. I'm not able to access it. How can we offer superior service availability? You know, we have so much technology. How can we, can we, we can easily predict an outage even before it happens, right? So how can we do that? That is from a customer perspective. Now, what's equally important is employee experience, which we are talking about customers, right? Employees are most, most important, right? If they are happy, customer is happy. How can we improve the productivity of employees? They should not go to multiple systems. They should not go to multiple sites. They should just go to one stop shop. The same experience you are providing to a customer, why can't you provide to employees? You have all the technology. Now, employee, I refer the segment to a customer-facing employees. If I'm a customer-facing employee, right, this is, this is my fundamental problem, right? With any bank, I bank with four banks, right? I call the bank with an issue, right? Nobody tells me, Mr. Arvind, we understand this is an issue you're calling me for. They always tell me, Mr. Arvind, how can I help you? There's so much technology. Why can't somebody tell me, with all the information in hand, Mr. Arvind, you are traveling very recently to the foreign country, your card was blocked, sorry about it. I was, forget the bank, I was talking to a health insurance company. My claim was getting delayed, you don't believe me? In this pandemic world, my claim was getting delayed, post-pandemic, my claim was getting delayed by a month. To be fair to them, health insurance organization, it was deluge of claims, right? But a month is not all. Now, I call them. They are again telling me, Mr. Arvind, how can I help you? <laughs> this, after my five emails to them, asking for the status. How can we enable a customer-facing employee? You know, this is not rocket science. There's no AIML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No AIML. No, no rocket science. All information at one point. Absolutely. Right? Now, let me add AML to it. If I add AML, I can make every conversation contextual to me. They're not going to sell me a personal loan I don't want. I get a personal loan offer. Every time. I get a credit card offer from the same bank I have. I have a credit card. <laughs> I don't need it. Right? So any, any offer coming to me, why can't it be contextual, personalized to me? Right? So, and that from an employee perspective. So anyone who's talking to me as from an employee perspective, how can we make that conversation contextual and relevant? Two, Number two. Let me just add to your, you know, from my own experience, and this is something, you know, that comes from my... So I keep getting, like, messages that, you know, your EMI is due and you must pay uh, this and that. Now, even after the payment has been made, I continue getting calls. I continue getting... Lots of messages. I mean, in this, when we are talking about AI, robotics, RPA, automation, whatnot, how is this happening? I feel to understand. And I tell them, okay, I have paid, and they are calling me on the phone, sir, did you pay? I said, it's been a couple of days that I did. And they keep turning up those communications. So I really want to understand where technology can fit into all of this and as uh, Arvind pointed out, make it more contextual and relevant. Absolutely. Absolutely, Mukbal. 
And the last piece, right, uh, employee, critical, right? We are providing all the information to him. Risk and complaints, right? We are highly regulated industry, right? Uh, now, there's a risk dashboard, there's a complaints dashboard, there's a business dashboard. Where can we get it together? Every decision, why can't we make it risk and complaints aware, right? Um, there's a lot of initiatives happening in the risk, risk area, continuous control monitoring, CCM, right? Why can't we implement that, right? So uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, we have all the technologies in the world. I think, uh, you know, uh, I think we need to use that to tr really transform uh, our complete BFSA industry, right? So that uh, customers, employees, and every stakeholder truly benefit from Right. Uh, yes. Just to add a little different perspective on the same subject. Now, you were mentioning first on a lighter vein that uh, uh, this, this generation, at least we see the transformation. Trust me, the next generation will see more. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, yeah. And, and there the are, are yeah, way more uh, better things to come. Now, now, I mean, I was listening to Balaji very uh, keenly and uh, uh, having no office ensured that you were on the cloud and you were present, omnipresent. Now, now Arvind has uh, brought up some challenges. Mithil was uh, listing out a lot of challenges about uh, uh, data sharing and and the ecosystem getting together. Mr. Subramani was talking about the quality of the data because you have to keep refining it. I'm sure all this is going to happen, but when, how, and who's going to take that initiative? Whatever happens, however digital transformation that we bring about, people are going to be there on Earth. And people have to eat, and it's going to be a very physical transaction. People are going to need shelter. People need uh, uh, hospitalization services, medical health services and all those things. So there is a lot of physicality that is reality. Transportation, a two-wheeler, you need to commute. I'm, I'm very sure there's not going to be a situation where you, do, you, you can be omnipresent, but you're not, you're at least in one location alone. It can't happen. There is a physicality involved. And if at all that data quality has to come, if at all those uh, democratization of the data has to happen, if at all the omni-channel has to be a little more extended, I'm just taking Aravind's point a little forward from a business perspective, omni-channel, Fantastic. Definitely the need of the hour for an enterprise to give a better cust uh, customer experience from the employee side also to make it a little uh, uh, meaningful in contributing to the customer experience. But just go one level more. The physicality which is existential, existential realism is the people. Okay, And this is a reality. People are going to be there. There are different enterprises trying to cater to different needs of that individual. Now, if that ecosystem collaborates. Now, since I see all CIOs here, all tech leaders here, the point that I'm trying to place on the table is, if there is a collaboration from the technology front, because collaboration cutting across industries, serving to an individual for various needs, can happen from two fronts. One on the technology front, and other on the finance, the banking and the finance industry, because money connects Everything. Everything. And ties up everything. And the only other thing that can connect everybody else is your technology. Now, money is money. So one gives and the, it's a debit entry one place and a credit entry on the other place. Money can just keep, keep, a number can keep moving. A lot of payment technologies have happened, but ultimately money still exists. I really don't know why. It can only be a debit and a credit entry. Uh, if at all, it is all shared completely. Uh, am I going to eat away somebody else's business? Could be the fear in collaborating. But then look at it a little differently. Uh, a two-wheeler manufacturer, a two-wheeler dealership, a two-wheeler manufacturer is very, very uh, realistic today. It is there. It exists. You have to make it physically. But a dealership can vanish tomorrow. Ola is already taking away the dealership. It could be a digital experience from end to end. Recoveries can never be digital alone. When I say recovery, collections can be uh, digital, but a recovery is a recuperating, re, uh, yes, yes, you know, I totally coming get your back, point, uh, yes, you know, coming Shira. back on that. Yes, yes. So all that needs collaboration, and money will link if technology can 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 bring us together. A two-wheeler manufacturer and a two-wheeler financier are all on the same platform with with a good quality of data from CAMS. You know, imagine everything is going to be seamless and nobody knows whether there's a financier, nobody knows whether there's a manufacturer, but the customer is catered to on all fronts. So technology can actually bring us together. Yes, yes, that's a very uh, noble sentiment that we have that uh, 
this decentralization that you're talking about is uh, absolutely possible uh, given the technology landscape that we have. And of course, uh, today businesses need to look at the digital space and as you rightly pointed out, uh, see the bigger picture. You know, when they collaborate, of course, there can be some short-term disadvantages, but looking at the longer, in the longer run, and the broader picture, those collaborations will yield a lot of results. And uh, with these words, I would really request Arvind to. Uh, Thank you, Mubal. So, uh, uh, you know, I think I heard, you know, all the key, uh, you know, um, key uh, insights, right? We talked about simplicity. We talked about uh, customer experience, right? Um, we talk about how can we prevent outages, right? Add infra, right? How can we low code? Automation, right? So we talked about all that. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give service no perspective, right? How, we, how uh, we are trying to address some of these challenges and how we have addressed these challenges um, across other BFSA customers today, right? So give me a moment, let me just open my deck. So I want to start this with introducing service now to you, right? Um, we are an organization, we, fo we are founded in 2004. Um, we are close to $5.6 billion uh, revenue making organization. But if you look at it, what is most important to us as an organization is we have a 99% renewal rate, right? So for us, taking our customers and making them achieve outcomes is superior and very important for us, right, as an organization. Now, um, we are in multiple areas. We, we are a Gartner and Forrester leader in IT service management. We started our journey there. Um, then we moved to uh, HR service management, focusing on employee experience. We are the leader there. Uh, we are the leader in the customer service management, right, focusing on sup delivering superior customer experience. We are the leader there. We are also the leader in the low code and no code capability as well, from a Gartner and Forrester perspective. Now, um, I want to talk about our platform for digital business, right? So we heard all these conversations, right? Simplicity, you know, um, I want, you know, no outages, right? I want easy integration, right? Um, it should be business agility, right? I want everything faster. I don't want, uh, you know, uh, an API creation to take two months. It can be done in the same day, right? It, 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 I will give you a funny anecdote, right? I was talking to a, you know, an EVP of a bank. And he was telling me, Arvind, I have my application. And for me to develop an API, the time taken by, the time getting quoted for me is two months, right? Is it necessary, right? So uh, we are hearing about all this, right? Now, uh, for us, for ServiceNow, we are the digitization platform, right? We are the cross enterprise platform for digital business, right? We enable you create cross enterprise wide digital workflows. Right, connecting across your your uh, you know your uh, backend systems and connecting your frontend systems. Right, so for for us, you know uh, you know someone was saying about integration. Right, integration being a problem, uh, for us integration is a strong point. Right, the most complex the integration is, can we can easily manage it. Right, so think about ServiceNow as one platform, which has workflow capability, where you can define your workflows. Right. It has artificial intelligence and ML capability. You can define your own models. You can use wizard one integration way to integrate with multiple systems, correct? And all of this available in one platform in a low code, no code manner. If you want to create a workflow, it's a low code. If you want to create an integration, it is a low code. If I want to create a native mobile application, it is a low code. If I want to create a website, it is a no code, right? with natural language processing inbuilt, right? So, so this is a digitization platform for you. So any kind of digitization you want to embark on, this is a digitization platform. Now, this digitization platform is available on cloud in India, delivered in Bangalore and Mumbai data centers in a completely HA way, right? So that there is no outage that's possible. Now, we have out of the box solutions sitting on top of this digitization platform. So we have customer workflows helping deliver customer experience. We have employee workflows delivering employee experience. 
we have technology workflows where we predict an outage even before it happens. Standard IT service management, IT operations management and so on. And we have a low code solution. All of this out of the box products in the same platform. If I just zoom in a bit more, okay, this slide, there's too much data, it's not visible from here, right? But if I, if I zoom in a bit more, ServiceNow platforms, this now platform is a foundation digitization platform that can help address your business agility need, your workflow need, your automation need, your RPA need, all that is available as part of this platform. On top of this, we have out of the box solutions, starting with IT workflows, right? We have, we have, we have IT service management, right? Your service request, your incident, your problem, your change. We have IT operations management. If I want to have an, if I have an outage, how fast I can fix it? How can I predict an outage, outage even before it happens? Predictive AI operations. We have asset management, correct? Hardware asset management, software asset management. We have, um, you know, security operations, right? We have integrated risk management, right? Uh, I was talking about bringing risk, compliance, everything in one umbrella, right? How can I do, you know, internal audit is available. Um, I can do a risk assessment. I can map a control to it. I can do continuous control monitoring. I can do an internal audit. All of this is available as out of the box with our technology IT workflows. Because this is needed, because it helps you provide superior service availability, both for employees as well as customers. Employee workflow, right? How, you know, um, in service now, you know, um, I joined six months back. When I joined in, I don't, I, from the moment I got hired, right? I was just looking at one mobile application. It's completely seamless, right? I don't need to go to multiple websites. I don't need to go to click multiple internet links. I just go to one portal, one mobile application for my HR, for my payroll, for my finance, for my IT, all my needs. I, I have never interacted with anybody. I just interact with my chatbot for anything, right? Yesterday I was having a doubt, hey, what is my leave balance? I want to take a leave. I just, I'm just traveling. I just, I'm just going to my chatbot and say, hey, what's my leave balance? Boom, the answer comes. I don't need to go to a separate system. How can I transform employee experience, right? Our employee workflow solutions that does that. Customer workflows, key, right? Key, pretty key. So providing uh, complete information about the customers across omni-channel. You know, this problem exists, right? So if I, if I, you know, if I'm having a conversation on a chatbot, the agent doesn't know. If I, if I having, a, if I'm raising an issue with a contact center, my branch person doesn't know, right? So we solve all that. So we have all the information across the customer interactions available as a customer 360 degree view for any service person or sales person to look at it. Number one. Number two, that is existing information coming in. We also help provide next best action. What is the next best action I can, next best conversation I can have with this customer? It can be a sale, it can be a service, it can be retention, right? That is again available as part of the solution. This is a problem we, that exists which we solve. Create a workflow, right? Low code platform. Now, whatever I was talking about so far is built on same platform, right? So, which is inherently low code and no code. So, if you say, hey, Arvind, I want to add an integration for your customer workflow layer, it is a wizard driven integration, it's a low code integration. It's not going to take two months, it can be done the same day. So, the, the low code capability is inherently as part of this platform, right? So, now, how all of this ties together, right? So, this helps because this completely helps transform the financial services right, customers, right? It's a, it becomes one platform for our financial service customers, right? Across customer experience, across employee experience, provided, providing integrated risk and complaints and governance, right? And all at the same time ensuring superior business agility. If I, now, um, where we have done this, right? Uh, we, have, we, have, we have thousand plus customers across the globe in the BFSA sector. Um, now, on India, if you look at it, right, more than, uh, we are, uh, we are working with 
top four banks in India, top four private banks in India, right? Um, if you look at uh, you know um, one, one of the largest bank, we started the journey um, with employee experience transformation. The MD of the bank said, Arvind, I wanted to give the same experience I'm giving my customers to my employees. So we transformed the employee experience. Then came in our predictive AI operations, right? This bank, what was happening was there was, uh, you know, uh, you, there was a lot of press coming in on outages. Frequent outages were happening. It was bad press. There was a lot of pressure coming from RBI, right? And we came in and we positioned our predictive AI operation solution. So, one, if an outage happens, it, it was interesting, right? Because when the CEO was telling me, there was so, when an outage happens, there was so much, so many teams get involved, from database, network, you know, a server, team, and whatnot, whatnot, and they on average takes more than ten hours to, ident to actually identify and solve a problem, right? Now, one, how fast I can recover? How, how fast I can? Um, Record from this outage, right? With all this information available. Number two, how can I even predict an outage even before it happens through predictive AI operations, right? And this has, this has been implemented in this bank, and now this has completely kind of transformed this bank, right? The number of priority one incidents have decreased, the service availability has increased significantly, and we have not had an outage uh, the last quarter completely. And um, in addition to that, uh, you know, uh, so I'm not able to disclose the names because we cannot re openly reference these banks, top four private banks in India. Um, uh, but uh, I can definitely talk about National Stock Exchange, right? NSC, um, you know, uh, again similar problem. They wanted to, to they wanted to do predictive AI operations, right? They want to transform their service IT service management. They partnered with ServiceNow, and then they wanted to then they went ahead and transform their customer experience management, right? Their customer agents, they completely transformed it. Uh, again, uh, this is a very one quick view of what we have done with a leading private bank in India. As I was telling you, we started with, uh, you know, they were, they were having a disconnected employee experience. The, you know, uh, employees were not happy, they were touching multiple tools, productivity, productivity was impacted. They had a siloed risk management, there were multiple tools. There was not, you know, one umbrella risk register. Uh, you know, um, a risk and business team was not talking to each other. Everything was completely separate, and uh, you had the service management issue as well, right? Now, with ServiceNow, what we have done is we have attacked all these three areas. We have transformed their employee experience. It's one-stop shop. You go in, uh, the employee goes in, everything comes there to him. Number two, it becomes an integrated risk management. Their regulatory complaints, their internal audit, their operational risk, right? Um, everything, right, runs on our platform now in an integrated way. And last but not the least, they went to our IT service management task, right? How can you know um, uh, they they you know a chatbot based service request, right? Why should I call an IT? Why should I email IT, right? I can solve my request myself, right? So everything via chatbot um, and so on and so forth, right? So this was a, again a huge success with one of the largest private bank in India. I want to highlight, and this kind of addresses majority of our concerns as well, starting from customer experience to employee experience um, to availability and as well as automation in a low-code, no-code manner. Um, and uh, I want to call my colleague uh, and partner Vivek, right? to talk about you know, our strategic partnership we are having with Maverick. Hello everyone, my name is Vivek and I take care of the strategic alliances for Maverick Systems and uh, it's the last part of this presentation, so I'll just talk a bit about Maverick Systems. So Maverick Systems has been in uh, the IT services sector for a long time now, close to 22 years. Uh, we are a global services company having offices um, in US, UK, Singapore and couple of offices in India. In India, we have delivery centers and R&D centers in um, Chennai, Pune, and Bangalore. So there are four services which we provide to all our customers, and uh, those are flows across quality engineering, data, digital, and terminals. And ServiceNow, as a practice, falls under our digital umbrella. Our clientele includes mostly global banks, city banks, standard chartered uh, credits user, all our key customers. They have been with us for the last 15 years. 
Uh, in India, we also work with a lot of banks, uh, Bandhan Bank, uh, NPCI, all existing customers. Data business is quite important for us. Data business recently, the last year, we crossed around 100 crores just for providing data services. Uh, with ServiceNow, we have uh, a practice which we have built over the last uh, couple of months, and we provide services like consulting, implementation, platform development, managed services. Uh, we are very focused with ServiceNow to provide solutions across financial services, risk and compliance, and also the app, uh, low-code, no-code development. We're also building a couple of solutions on the ServiceNow platform. One of them is the customer onboarding journey with personal loans, uh, in which we're building the solution on app, journey, on app engine, and also trying to integrate with their uh, loans, out-of-box loan servicing solutions. Also, other couple of solutions uh, is about mortgages, and also we do a lot of mobile application development for banks in India. So our partnership is quite strong. We are focused on building up this partnership in India and Europe. And uh, we look forward to you know, working with ServiceNow on uh, uh, future projects. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, you know, such a lovely discussion. I loved every bit of it. And uh, I hope you did as well. And uh, uh, keeping, the, you know, keeping in mind the interest of time and the interest of everyone's time, you know, we would like to call it a wrap. Thank you once again for sparing time for this discussion. Thank you. Thanks a lot.